Hey guys, Casey here. Welcome back to Lions Den Investments and Reviews. I uh, hope you guys had a good weekend. I know I got a lot of new subscribers on the uh, channel here, so I want to thank you all for subscribing to the channel. We're going to be covering a lot of content moving forward on the market. Uh, everything from you know the decentralized finance uh, to the technology use case, fundamentals, uh, new projects coming out. So there's a lot of information and a lot of stuff coming out that I got to keep track of and uh, just keep up to date on for you. So I'll be releasing content uh, probably two or three times a week for you on that. Um, but hey, if you're watching this for the first time, guys, and you're a lion, you know, and you've separated yourself from the herd of sheep, and you want to rip the face off of this crypto market, go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. And uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get into the video here. I want to talk about Bitcoin real quick because Bitcoin is the dominant token in the crypto space. And right now, if you've got other you know, projects or altcoins that you're invested in, or you're tracking the price of Ethereum, you might as well forget about it right now and just focus on Bitcoin. And the reason why is because Bitcoin, when it goes down in price, it's going to take the rest of the altcoins with it, the entire market. If it goes up in price, it's going to do the same there. Everything else will go up in price as well. Um, but if you're not familiar with what took place over the weekend, um, and they had something called the Bitcoin Death Cross, and this is where the 200-day uh, moving average and the 50-day moving average uh, cross over each other. So the 50-day goes underneath the 200-day moving average, okay? Now, in the past, if you look at the charts for bull runs in the past, every time that we've had a, uh, a death cross on Bitcoin, um, you know, it's, it's basically went into a bear market or we've had a major crash. And so a lot of people right now are freaked out that Bitcoin is going into yet another major crash, which honestly, in my own personal opinion, this is just this is just my opinion. It's not financial advice. My opinion would be that, uh, you know, that's uh, that's pretty accurate. OK, but it doesn't mean that the, the bull run is over. What I think is going to happen here, if you're just looking at the chart, uh, if you see the chart here that I've got in front of me, here's your 200 day moving average, right? And you can see we've been in a range, a zone range right now on Bitcoin between 39,162 and roughly about 30,500 or, or just call it 30,000. OK, and you can see we retested, you know, many different times right here at 30,000. OK, one, two, three. And now we're getting ready to retest it again. But uh, if you study charts or listen to any of these technical experts out there who are paying attention to Bitcoin right now, they keep talking about this uh, Wyckoff distribution, okay? And the Wyckoff distribution is just a technical analysis chart pattern. I'm not going to go into it because, quite frankly, I don't care. Um, but the Wyckoff distribution chart shows that we should be going into yet another dip on Bitcoin, and that would be the end of you know Bitcoin hitting its all-time low, and then you're going to get a spring back which will send prices much, much higher. Um, now, if you look at this from a fundamental perspective, I think that is, it, again, it's it's 100% accurate in my opinion. And the reason why is because it's nothing more than a shakeout. What I keep, what do I keep telling you guys? I always say that these these big banks, these institutions, the the Federal Reserve, they all want, they don't want you owning Bitcoin. Okay, they all want what you have. So why on earth, just knowing that, would you want to liquidate Ethereum or Bitcoin and get panicked in the markets and sell? Because what I'm telling you here, guys, is that I'm I'm expecting that we come back down to about 29,000 or 28,000 on Bitcoin. We may even drop a little bit lower than that. But this would be what I would consider the last big shakeout before they buy it up. And then you're going to see Bitcoin over the next two or three months going in from July to August and September, and it's just going to make an absolute tear upwards in price and hit all-time new highs, and it'll leave a lot of folks priced out. And a lot of people are going to be sitting there shaking their head, um, you know, beating themselves up that they, they went ahead and sold at the bottom because what you saw take place back here in May, you know, early May before we, we took that huge dump, you saw a big accumulation in FOMO of retail investors getting into Bitcoin because we were hitting all-time highs, right? And this is typical of the herd mentality when it comes to, you know, those folks that I, I refer to as sheep. 
Um, they always buy in at the top. Then, you know, it comes crashing down. The big boys bring it down on purpose, scare the crap out of everybody. And these people sell at the bottom. And then they just jack it right back up in price. Um, so, again, like I've said in previous videos, the strategy here, especially in this bull run, because it's a little bit different when it comes to manipulation from the central banks uh, and the big institutions on Wall Street, instead of trying to project and and chase the trade, you know, and predict the prices of these these cryptos, instead of doing that, just hold on. Just hold on and accumulate when we get the dips. Back the truck up, you know, add more to your uh, your portfolio, and then wait for the prices to rebound because I honestly believe that we are not done with this bull run. Uh, we're about halfway through it, and if you look back on charts, you know, throughout the history of Bitcoin, this has happened before. Yet, yes, this one is a much bigger crash than what we've experienced. And if we just look at the... Uh, the price range here from the very very top all the way down here to the bottom at 30,000 we've already had a 52.88 percent uh, correction okay so this is by far one of the largest corrections we've had in Bitcoin but it does not mean that this uh, this bull market is over and again going back to the Wyckoff distribution uh, the, the charts and patterns on that you know they always talk about the uh, the last leg there, and I'll, I'll see if I can't bring it up here for you, um, because I want to I want to show you guys the chart and what it looks like. Boy, I butchered that. Um, <laughs> why cough? Here we go. Oh. Let me just see if I can pull up an image for you here. Here's a good one right here. So this this chart, okay. You can see you got. Uh, Phase A, Phase B, Phase C, and Phase D, and Phase E, right? Well, right now they're saying we're right here going into Phase C, which would be the spring. And you can see right over here where my mouse is, you get this very last dip, okay? And you can see we, we've got support lines over here, all right? And you make this, this one final dip down when everybody expects it to kind of hit support right over here. Uh, that's kind of what's taking place with Bitcoin right now. We'd be right right up in here. And so I'm expecting that we come down and we're going to do a spring back and then off we go. But that's what the Wyckoff, uh, the Wyckoff distribution chart looks like. So we'll just get rid of that real quick. Um, that's Bitcoin right now. And that's all I really care about. Uh, because again, you got to watch the price of, of Bitcoin and either HODL or stake to make it like I've been saying so you can take some of your other tokens if you're allowed to stake them go ahead and stake them uh, because there you don't care what the price is you can dollar cost average in and you can dollar cost average out uh, as prices go up that's if you want to trade um, let's go over here though because I want to cover some of the uh, the use case and technology on some of these other projects uh, this just came out not too long ago and they're talking about the ethereum upgrade which will reduce the Ethereum supply moves into final stages here, okay? This is on the London hard fork, which will include the EIP-1559, which lowers the amount of ETH miners, um, or it'll lower the amount of Ethereum that miners receive, okay? And if you're not familiar with that, you can go back and watch a few, a few of my videos. I cover what all is in the EIP-1559 protocol uh, upgrades there and what that affects. So in brief, basically, the London hard fork should be ready in July, and uh, it'll hit the Robston te test net uh, next week. Now, here's a cool thing about the month of July, because we're almost towards the end of June and just finishing up June. Uh, not only do we have this being rolled out, but you also have Jerome Powell, who's the head of the Fed, who's going to be making an announcement to the entire United States population on the projects, the, the pilot projects that they are launching um, for a U.S. digital dollar, okay? And that is in July, and and that's still on the table, that's still in the cards, that's ready to go, and when that happens, okay, <laughs> watch the sentiment in the markets because I have a feeling right now we'll go from, you know, being bearish, when that happens, it, the whole sentiment's going to change again, and we'll go back uh, bullish, and we'll probably, at that point, if you go back and look at the Wyckoff distribution, we're going to be in that, that spring 
uh, retest and, and going higher in prices, okay? So um, getting back to Ethereum though, the London hard fork here, a scheduled upgrade to Ethereum is first making its way to the blockchain's test networks because they have to test it. Uh, Tim, Tim Biko of the Ethereum Foundation announced today that London will go live on the Ropstein testnet around June 24th, uh, followed by the Gourley on June 30th. And these are all test nets, guys. And then Rinkaby on July 7th. Uh, once the upgrade has success, successfully been activated on these networks, a block will be set for the Ethereum mainnet. Um, and let's scroll down here and see what else they have to say. The uh, Again, the most controversial change here is the IP1559, originally floated by Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin, uh, which alters how network fees work and how miners, the people running the software that process all the transactions and, and mint new Ethereum, get compensated, okay? Um, so I'm not going to go into too much more detail about the article here. Basically, uh, this implies that most of the time, you know, blocks will have an extra 100% of their capacity that can fill with transactions. So so long as transaction is sent with a fee higher than a base fee and includes a tip for the miner, it will be included in the next handful of blocks. If the network is super congested, the fee structure will use the current auction system. Okay, and, and they're talking about the issue that they're trying to tackle with the IP 1559. Um, and, and basically, it's going to double the capacity of the blocks. So that's that's what they're referring to here. Um, the added transparency is billed as an improvement to user experience. Some miners, however, claim that it's uh, deleterious to their experience. Under EIP-1559, that base fee is burnt, meaning, meaning it's taken out of circulation, okay? Um, instead of going to miners... The, the idea is to turn Ethereum, which doesn't have a supply limit like Bitcoin, into a deflationary asset or at least create some deflationary pressure. Uh, so I'll leave a link for the description in, uh, to this article in, in the description below here. And you can go ahead and check that out for yourself, read over it more. But that's currently where they stand on the Ethereum upgrade. And that brings me to the next uh, article I want to talk to you about because <laughs> we're talking about Ethereum here. And this goes hand in hand with Ethereum. And that is Theta. All right, so all my Thetans out there, how you guys doing? Um, listen to this one. Now, if you've been paying attention to the Theta announcements, you already know about this. But for people who don't, Theta is extending development compatibility with Ethereum with a new RPC API suite. Okay, this is Web3 tools, MetaMask integration, and more. Um, over the last few weeks, they're saying we saw many new blockchains branded as Ethereum killers. Uh, as you may know, you know, Polkadot was one of those. And now, you know, I've been saying for the longest time that Theta is not necessarily going to be an Ethereum killer, but it'll be bigger than Ethereum itself and probably be like a sister token alongside with Ethereum when it comes to use case and what all it has to offer. OK, so. You know, they're, they're talking about many new blockchains branded as Ethereum killers, uh, smart contract platforms that could displace Ethereum with their superior technology and feature sets, right? That narrative has started to fall away as competitors failed to gain traction and the Ethereum development community proved to be a stronger factor than simply whoever had the fastest blockchain. Um, at Theta, uh, they're saying, we've always viewed Ethereum as a positive force in the crypto space rather than a rival to disrupt. And that's why, from the start, we focused on Ethereum interoperability, uh, including the Ethereum virtual machine compatible smart contract environment. And that's that's coming from Theta, guys. Uh, so this is huge news for Theta. I love the fact that they're doing this because it's like, hey, you don't want to beat Ethereum, okay? Ethereum started this whole movement with smart contracts, and instead of trying to recreate the, the wheel and make it better, you might as well join forces with Ethereum and just bring some new technology to the space uh, for Ethereum developers, that being like live streaming video for blockchain because Theta is the first blockchain uh, to lead the way and pave, pave the way for this entire new market in blockchain NFTs and for uh, the uh, live streaming video concept that they bring to the table for the entire blockchain space. So 
very interesting. It's very exciting. I think it's going to innovate a lot of more creativity and innovation on the data blockchain itself. And I wouldn't be surprised here next year if you're starting to see a whole new market take place under uh, Theta's lead, you know, kind of like Ethereum did with altcoins. But this one will be for like social media, uh, live streaming video uh, use cases and stuff like that that people can build on uh, with with Theta blockchain. So, uh, guys, that's all I have for today's video. Uh, stay tuned because my next one coming up, I'm going to be covering uh, more of the fundamentals. We'll go over uh, some some updates on XRP. I'll talk about, you know, just basically anything that has to do with fundamentals and where we are right now when it comes to central banks and, you know, what they're doing for blockchain policy. And we'll, we'll take a look at how that affects the U.S. dollar and uh, this whole transfer of wealth that's taken place. So stay tuned for that. Remember, these markets are volatile. Okay, like I said, you can hodl or you can stake it to make it. And that's exactly what I would be doing right now if I was, you know, if somebody asked me for advice on what to do, that's essentially what I'd be telling them to do right now. And then just back that truck up whenever we get uh, prices falling like this because, again, like I said, I don't think this bull run is over yet. And if you're if you're in the same opinion as me, hit that like button, okay? Let me know where you think the markets are going. I would be curious to know what all you guys think. But with that said, you guys have a great day. And as usual, fear nothing, my friends, okay? I'll talk to you later.